This news update is brought to you by... Got kids? Then you need video on demand from Flow with hours of entertaining shows and movies for boys and girls of all ages. There's always something to watch. Simply press the VOD button on your Flow remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Afternoon Update for Tuesday, February 23rd, 2016. Thank you for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. We begin with a strong warning from police that anyone found harboring missing minors will face the full brunt of the loss. The stern comment from police public relations officer, acting assistant superintendent David Welch, as investigations continue into last week's disappearance of six girls from the Grantley Adams Secondary School. All the girls minors have been found and the Bobby today understands that all six have been charged with wandering and sent to the government industrial school five were found at the saint michael home over the weekend and the six was located by a parent the force would wish to advise adults that if they see children coming to their residence they should inquire about their welfare and to take certain information from them so that they can find out if they are indeed missing from home. Failing to do this, they can find themselves liable. I must advise persons that if they willfully, knowingly harbor these persons, they can be prosecuted. Under our laws, if anyone has sexual relations with a person on the age of 16, they will be prosecuted. We will hold a zero tolerance to those persons who engage in this type of behavior. Children must be children. Our children must be protected. Ten teenagers under the age of 16 have been placed on the police missing list so far this year. Meantime, the father of Kenesha Taylor is seeking answers. Kenesha is now back home after missing for over a week, but her dad, Mark, is still a worried man. He tells Bobby yesterday he remains puzzled about what drove the 14-year-old to run away from home on a Friday. His daughter, he says, has since been hospitalized, and while she provided police with inf information, he was still unsure who she had been with during her absence. She's back, and I give thanks for that. It's time to see for that for sure, because we're praying to just get it back. So I feel great, <clears throat> a lot better, definitely, you know, to know that we know where she is and she's back, that's the honest truth. But I'm still a little bit, you know, a little bit concerned in terms of the real reason, you know, that they, that, you know, caused this thing to occur, you know, that's the one thing about me puzzling. You know, I need to know what's on her mind, you know, how she's seeing the perspective, you know. I don't believe there's got to be something. I don't know what exactly it is. That's the honest truth. I just don't have an idea. So, mm -hmm. but that's just about it. You know, I just would really like to find it from her. You know, uh, when the time comes. In other news, there's a suggestion that the country has lost its way. It comes from General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Tony Moore, who also contends that today's leaders are making decisions without a meaningful dialogue with those affected. Addressing the opening of the Week of Excellence at the Grand Salle of the Central Bank of Barbados yesterday, the trade union leader called on leaders in every sector to do a self-analysis, adding that they had a collective responsibility to direct their resources, to take advantage of the biggest opportunities, and to tackle the biggest threats to a sustainable future. We all speak the language of putting our country first and securing a sustainable future. Yet we continue to deny tomorrow's leaders the opportunity to learn from the strongest and most independent <coughs> leaders in each field. We deny them the opportunity to participate in debates that shape policy meaningfully. We have been failing in our responsibility to demonstrate that there is a consensus guiding Barbados and binding us together. All this while we say we want to raise productivity, and competitiveness. The BW salutes the focus of this week because it provides an opportunity for those of us in leadership to step back, to assess what is missing, what we need to grow and sustain, beginning with ourselves. 
Member of Parliament for St. Lucie, Dennis Kelman, wants Barbadians to focus on solutions instead of the challenges facing the country. The outspoken MP issued the call during a branch meeting at his constituency office in Pike Corner, St. Lucie, over the weekend. Describing the recent water outages as a major headache, the Minister of Housing told party supporters that he has personally made several recommendations to officials of the Barbados Water Authority on how to deal with this particular problem. But he made it clear that focus must remain on finding solutions. I find that in Barbados that the biggest problem, everybody can tell you what is wrong. But nobody spends time trying to tell you how to solve a problem. And I want to tell you, I beg to differ. I am not interested in talking about what is wrong. I'm interested in finding a solution to the problem. And I believe that if we find more people in Barbados devoting their energy to converting negatives into positives, this small country will continue to be sweet. Because don't mind that there are people complaining. We are already living in the heaven on earth. Because the truth is, why we are here belly aching, people in the United States complaining about lead poison from water, people in Jamaica cannot get water, etc. And people also have to understand that when I say something before they jump to criticize it, they need to study what I'm saying. In news from the sporting world, three cricketers from the West Indies men's side will make their sixth successful ICC World T20 appearance when competition gets going in Nagpur on March 8th. They are Dwayne Bravo, Chris Gale and Dennis Ramdin. There are 17 other players from squads around the world who will make similar appearances. In the women's event, which has been staged alongside the men's event since 20. O9, the West Indies will enter the competition with six players having played in all tournaments to date. These are Stephanie Taylor, Marisa Aguilera, Deandra Dottin, Stacey Ann King, Anissa Mohammed, and Shakira Selman. 23 other women are also making similar, similar stints. 16 men's squads and 10 women's squads will play at eight venues across India with Eden Gardens in Kolkata to host the finals on April 3rd. There's regional and international news after this short break. and activities for everybody. So don't dixie doodle your fizzy hog. Oh, brother daddy will be there, along with my sheep, Dolly, Doopsy, and Dan. So come, let me set it with the very best of agriculture in the Caribbean. Originally, all systems are go for the general election in Jamaica, so says Director of Elections, Orette Fisher, following yesterday's polling by election day workers and members of the security forces. Fisher said that from all accounts, the process, which saw 39,108 special services voters exercising their franchise, was conducted without any hiccups. She also reports that an over 50% turnout of voters in that category and she says the electoral office of jamaica is more than capable of handling a large turnout of voters come thursday and over in grenada a primary school there has forced the shutdown of its doors following a chicken pox outbreak health officials have confirmed 17 cases of chicken pox among students at the school which is located in the heart of the city
And on the international scene, leaders of some of Britain's biggest companies say leaving the European Union will threaten jobs and put the country's economy at risk. Bosses, including those of BT, Marks and Spencer and Vodafone, signed a letter published in the Times saying an EU exit would deter investment in the UK. Speaking in Parliament yesterday, the Prime Minister David Cameron told his colleagues that the move was in the best interest of the country. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.fabulousstudy.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good afternoon. <laughs>